Hello everyone, this is David from Automotive Press. Many of you guys have been asking me to explain exactly what the allocation model is like for Toyota. So I'm going to explain how that works today. And this is a really interesting video because you also have to understand how Toyota produces cars and truck under the Toyota production system. If you can understand that, then you will also understand the allocation model that they use to figure out which dealers get exactly which cars and why can't you not therefore order trucks or cars that you want from Toyota dealership. These are very common questions that many of you guys have been asking me and so I'm going to answer that for you right now. One of the most commonly asked question is, how do you place an order for Toyota products, cars or trucks? Well, you can't actually place an order for what you want under the Toyota system. So how does it work? Well, it's called the allocation system. And I know it's very confusing for many of you, but let me try to simplify and see if I can explain exactly how that works so you can actually beat the system in some way and try to find a way to get the car or truck you want when you want it. In order to do that, I first have to explain the Toyota production system or TPS. How does exactly Toyota figure out when to produce which type of models in one factory? Then that in turn affect the way cars or trucks are delivered and allocated to different dealerships. But first, let me explain to you how the Toyota production system work in a very, very simple way. So if you compare the Toyota model to other brands, other car companies, you'll begin to understand and appreciate the difference. So most uh, car companies out there will produce the same model, same color, and they will batch it for, let's say, five to 10 cars at a time in the factory. So they will run along here, again, same model, same color, and they'll switch over to a different color or a different model uh, at some point, but they're going to want to batch again. By batching several cars at the same time, they think they save money and time because there's no hassle factor associated with switching from one car to another car or change the color. So that's the typical traditional old method, I call it. But the Toyota production system says we need to produce the car and truck exactly in the order that the customers want in the way they want. So they say we will produce just in time according to the demand of the supply chain. So they will take a mixture of different types of cars as well as different colors and they will produce them all in the same production line. They will switch from one color to the next color or from one type of car to the next type of car as long as these two are related to each other in the same line back and forth every single model. So this is called just-in-time production. Uh, it's single flow, we also call it, because it's a single piece that's flowing along the production line. But this is obviously more complex and somewhat more difficult to figure out because the automation system, the production system, and also the labor associated with producing and assembling these things have to switch back and forth over and over again every single car, every single truck. So it's more complex to figure out, but what it does is allow Toyota to use what we call heijunka, which is a Japanese word that means balancing different series of things. And so in this case, we can balance different types of cars, different types of colors. That will allow Toyota to produce this in a mixed model lineup or mixed model production. And this type of production is, again, more complex to figure out, but Toyota has perfected over the years that's why Toyota is able to mix the models coming out of the factory and when they're shipped to the dealership here in North America, we get a variety of a mixture of different models, which is preferred than receiving cars or truck with all same color or all same trim. This concept will probably help you to understand why when Toyota releases the allocation to different dealership, we are getting a mixture of things like uh, SR or SR5 or Limited or Platinum or, or uh, 1794 in the case of Tundra, and they're arriving in this mixture of uh, different models. Now, that's the sort of the backdrop and the supply chain side of this equation. So what happens on the dealer side? Well, let's move the factory aside for a second.
Now let's look at the allocation model. Let's assume that this is all tundra for, uh, for discussion purposes, and they come in different colors, okay? Red tundra to black, uh, maybe even uh, green, army green. We don't get uh, lighter blues anymore, uh, but uh, we do get the darker blues now. And of course, the windshield white, which is the tundra I purchased. So what happens is the Toyota decides based on general Heijunka principle, which again means line balancing, what colors, what trim levels, and what models to produce in a mixed fashion. They are therefore going to mix different colors of tundra, if we were using tundra as an example, and they're going to be producing in a sequencing in the mixed model format. So when they are coming out of the factory, it's coming in mixed model format. Now Toyota has to decide which of these will be allocated to which dealers. Now based on where you live, US or Canada, the model might be slightly different. And I'm going to simplify this so that it's easier to explain. But the basic concept is that Toyota will decide uh, which dealers will get which models, which trims, and which colors. And they're going to use this partly based on history of the purchases that were made by the dealers, also the type of demand that they are seeing in that particular region, but also based on the type of cars or colors they're able to produce from a factory. So they will then give you the allocation to let's say dealer A, dealer B, and dealer C. So let's say they allocate this to dealer A, these to the dealer B, and another mixture of colors. To dealer C. Now the first allocation for Tundra appears to be about four trucks, four to five trucks at the most, depending on the size of the dealer. So larger dealers will get more allocation, smaller dealers will get less, obviously, that's based on the history of their purchase. So now that they've allocated, then they're going to release this allocation to dealer principals in advance of the actual delivery. The dealer will receive it and say, okay, I have received these trims and these colors. Well, I have to basically take it as it comes, or I could potentially trade with another dealer. They will say things like, I have a red Tundra double cab coming, but I really want an army green crew cab. Would you guys be interested? So dealer A might talk to dealer B. And if they both agree the switch or the bartering kind of makes sense, they can make that switch before the truck arrives. So this is all still sort of on paper, uh, done virtually. And then uh, once the truck is actually shipped to the dealer, because they officially switched over with the permission from Toyota, the switched version of the truck will now arrive at the dealers as it was intended after the switch. Uh, again, dealer C can say, I also want to switch, but I didn't have a chance to consider this before the truck arrived. I already received the truck, can I still switch with you? So sometimes they will switch after the fact, which is more difficult to do. And they'll say, I have a customer who really want the white truck, you have the white truck, you received it already, um, and I have a block, would you, be, would you consider switching? They might say, yeah, actually we do need one more block, so I'll switch with you, and they can physically change and switch the truck over between the two dealers. So that's also possible, that's done physically as opposed to virtually. But in all cases, the switching of the cars or trucks either before delivery or after delivery is typically not encouraged and it's not something they like to do because it affects the way they receive their allocation, it affects the way they price their um, markup and so forth. So now let me explain to you how the customer side of things work. I explained to you the production side and the dealer side. So the customer will now come and say, I really want to buy a white or wind chill pearl in the case of Tundra. Uh, crew cab platinum. They have a specific model in their mind and let's say they are dealing with uh, a dealer A and they've been dealing with them for a while. They go to dealership and they say I want the wind chill pearl uh, crew cab platinum tundra. Could you please place my, my order for it? If the dealer said yes I will place the order for you and I will get you that white platinum you want uh, that is not true. That is, they can't place an order from the factory that way. So that is not going to happen. What they have to do is wait for Toyota to release the allocation and hope that the white platinum is included in one of the future allocation and then get you that particular truck. But they can't specifically 
asked for a white uh, Tundra directly from Toyota and asked them to produce it and ship it to that dealership. That is not how it works because once again, Toyota chooses beforehand which one goes to which dealers. The only exception to keep in mind is if the customer comes to a dealership and let's say paid for white platinum Tundra and they've asked for that particular model, then the dealer can request from Toyota to say we have a sold unit for white platinum could you try to fill that in as soon as possible in the next round of allocation? And Toyota, based on the production scheduling, will do their very best to try to fulfill the allocation. But once again, generally speaking, it's really Toyota saying, this is what we give you, please take it and find the customer who wants this product. So what this actually means is that if you went to this dealer A again, you asked for white platinum, but didn't arrive in the first allocation, and let's say in the second allocation, which could be a few weeks away or maybe a month away, uh, let's say that they still don't have the white platinum you wanted. Well then, you have a choice. You can either continue to wait and try to get the uh, model you want from that particular dealer you've been dealing with, or you can kind of shop around and ask for other dealers to see if they have the white platinum that you want, a crew cab, let's say, and if they do and it's not sold, you simply go and buy that from them. Uh, so this is a bit of a, a game now because it's kind of like a puzzle trying to fit everything together. And at the end of the day, you don't exactly know which dealers get exactly what type of color, what type of trim. So you kind of have to hunt around. So what I try to do to kind of uh, beat the system or at least work with the system is to uh, try to talk to three or four dealers at a time, many, many months before these allocations are released and try to negotiate with them to place a small deposit that is refundable based on whether or not I get exactly what I want and then put my request in early, as much as six months, sometimes one year away. So I placed deposit on the new Tundra, for example, almost seven or eight months ago, and that's why I had a first dip of exactly what I want. So what happened basically is in the first round of allocation that was released recently, I was able to find what I want, which is a white platinum at a particular dealer I placed deposit on. Uh, but the other two dealers where I have deposit didn't have what I want. So I'm going to then transfer those uh, credits over to something else in the future, uh, namely the TRD Pro version of Tundra, which I hope to buy in the summer of next year. So I'm going to go ahead and buy the white platinum uh, crew cab short bed from this one dealer and then come July or August when the TRD Pro is available, uh, let's say in Lunar Rock, which is what I want, I'm going to trade in my platinum for that Lunar Rock TRD Pro Tundra. So that's how I work with a system. But you kind of have to keep in mind that there are things like a markup and other factors that play a big role in whether or not this works for you or not. Here in Canada, we're lucky because uh, it's illegal to mark up uh, MSRP. So we get everything at MSRP. The dealer can add options and accessories, but they can't simply add markup. And also, uh, they have to refund deposit if I change my mind, again, based on regulation. So I don't have to worry about losing my deposit. And because I buy so many Toyota cars and trucks, I'm able to put smaller deposit with dealers. And so it works for me. So hopefully this makes sense for you. Basically, you can't walk into dealership and order exactly what you want from the dealer through Toyota. But what you can do is request for a particular model, color, or trim that you want and try to get dealer to match that particular model uh, with what you want, either by waiting for different rounds of allocation or asking them to trade and barter with other dealers so that they can get the model you want into their inventory, either early in the supply chain system or later on when the truck arrives on site. And that way you can eventually get the car or truck you want. So I hope this makes sense to you. Please put a comment below if uh, you need more clarification on how this works. I'm happy to explain more about the supply chain or the production system in the future videos. Please smash the like button and subscribe if you can so that I can continue to deliver interesting videos that will entertain and educate you. Thank you so much.